This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Government to assist the students returning from Ukraine to find alternative places of study. Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith has announced that, that the government will be making efforts to find university places for Jamaican students whose studies were disrupted by the war in Ukraine. The students have fled the Eastern European country as Russia invaded and are now in Poland awaiting flights to Jamaica. Now they are expressing concerns about their future, however, given uncertainties about whether they will be able to continue their studies. Mrs. Johnson-Smith said while there is no guarantee, the government will be pursuing several avenues to have them placed in alternative schools. In that regard, she revealed that the government will be re-engaging the University of the West Indies to see if there is any possibility at all of accommodation. Additionally, the Jamaican government will be contacting other governments to see if they have any programs in place which will be seeking to accommodate the students who have been disrupted from their studies in Ukraine specifically. She said arrangements are also being made for when the students land in Jamaica, providing ground transport from Montego Bay for those who might require it. The Minister of Health and Wellness will also be making counseling services available to the students if and when they wish to take advantage of that opportunity, she disclosed. The People's National Party has also organized a team of psychiatrists and a psychologist to provide support to the students. A statement from the PNP said its president, Mark Golding, had secured the commitment of six psychiatrists to provide counseling services to the students who may have been affected by the Ukraine-Russia conflict. The services are available electronically to the students who crossed the border into neighboring countries such as Poland and Romania, students who are still in Ukraine, and those who have returned to Jamaica. Mr. Golden has advised the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Trade of the offer. Two in custody over Mobe warehouse gun seizure. The police are reporting that two persons are in custody in relation to the seizure of seven firearms in St. James on Monday. The police say the two were arrested following an operation at a warehouse on Sea Grape Way in Montego Bay in the parish. It is reported that about 2.30 p.m., a joint team consisting of members of the contraband enforcement team and the police were making checks at the facility. The guns were discovered during an inspection of electronic items. Seized are one AM-15 assault rifle, one double R Armory multi-caliber assault rifle, one Ruger PC charger, one Canic TP-95F handgun, one Ruger SR-9C handgun, and the two Taurus G2C handguns. Investigations continue. Saint and hotel manager reported missing. The police are seeking the public's help to locate Saint and hotel manager, 65-year-old Clyde Taylor, who has been reported missing. The police say Taylor, who is from Salem in Runaway Bay, has not been seen since Saturday, February 26. It is reported that Taylor left home about 9 p.m wearing a striped blue and orange long-sleeved shirt and blue jeans and pants. He is of dark complexion and medium build. All efforts to contact him have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Clyde Taylor is asked to contact the Runaway Bay Police at 876-973-7057-119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Jamaica bracing for negative impact of Russia-Ukraine conflict, says Clark. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says Jamaica is bracing for the negative impact the Ukraine-Russia conflict will have on the global economy. Dr. Clark says the price of oil will be a major concern. The finance minister on Tuesday disclosed that there is a possibility that oil prices will be higher than was assumed when the 2022 2023 budget was crafted. However, he believes the negative impact on oil and other commodity prices will be short-term, saying he expects at some point during the year for there to be some retreat in those prices. Dr. Clark was speaking during the meeting of the Standing Finance Committee 
which is reviewing the 2022-2023 budget. AK-47 rifle seized on Chambers Lane in St. Andrew. The police have seized an AK-47 rifle along with ammunition in an unfinished building on Chambers Lane in St. Andrew. No arrest was made in connection with the seizure. The police report that a cops from St. Andrew Central were on an operation in the area on Monday when the building was searched and the firearm found in a plastic bag that was hidden inside the roof. Investigations continue. District Constable held with illegal gun A district constable is now in custody after he was caught allegedly with an illegal firearm last night, police sources have revealed. His name is being withheld. The gun, a Smith and Wesson .45 caliber pistol, was loaded with 10 bullets. It's reported that a police team was on patrol in the community of Seaview Gardens when they saw a man seated on a wooden bench along the roadway. The man reportedly began acting in a manner that aroused their suspicion. He was searched and a gun seized. Man's body found in Ensom City, St. Catherine. The body of a man with the hands and the feet bound was found on Tuesday morning in Ensom City, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. It has been identified as that of Ian Robinson of a red ground in Old Harbor, St. Catherine. Passers-by stumbled upon Mr. Robinson's body on a plain field in the vicinity of the Ensom City Community Center sometime after 7 o'clock. Residents reported hearing explosions on Monday night. Watchdog groups award gag order weakening integrity commission. Anti-corruption watchdog Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal has expressed the concern that a gag order on the integrity commission is weakening the entity. The integrity commission act prevents the organization from making any announcement that it has commenced an investigation or provide an update on the probe. JAMP's executive director, Jeanette Calder, says the investigative process by the Integrity Commission is seriously compromised by the gag order. She says there is need for balance to protect people being investigated while sharing basic information about a probe into matters of public concern. We are not interested in knowing who is under investigation as much as we are interested in knowing what is under investigation contended Ms. Calder. Now, just the last year, we had a situation with the Auditor General of Jamaica where we had a concern brought on by the media. The Minister of Finance went into the House and reassured the opposition and the public that the Auditor General would be probing the Clarendon Aluminum Production Limited. That's it, no names, as she noted. The Auditor General does it without any complaints. Tell us what is being investigated in terms of the issue, not the person. National Integrity Action has recommended that the gag order on the Integrity Commission be replaced with policy guidelines that ensure a balance is struck between public interest and reputational damage. Professor Trevor Monroe, Principal Director of the NIA, has said it is unacceptable that the Integrity Commission continues to operate under a gag order despite calls for it to be removed. Of course, we agree there must be a balance, but there cannot be an absolute gag, a statutory bar on the Integrity Commission saying yea or nay when a matter is being investigated. The clause as it stands now must be amended or deleted to ensure that the Commission has the discretion to say yes, we are investigating the Firearms Licensing Authority or yes, we are investigating the matter referred by the Auditor General in relation to the Ministry of Education's unwarranted $124 million of our money granted to an authority that ought not to be. That's all we are saying. There must be a balance, said Professor Monroe. Senior Cop wants end to stigma against the Westmoreland youth. Private sector interests have been urged to end the discrimination against the poor youth living in Westmoreland's squatter settlements. The call has been made by Senior Superintendent of Police Robert Gordon head of the Westmoreland Police Division, who has acknowledged that many young people have been refused employment because of stigmatized communities. For those of you who run businesses, do not make the address of any of these young men 
be the determining factor for not employing them, Gordon said. He gave that warning during a divisional worship service and appreciation awards ceremony held at the Torrington Wesleyan Holiness Church on Sunday. As a matter of fact, those are the ones that you should employ because all they need is guidance, the senior police officer declared. They are good boys and good girls, and I tell you, if it was not for the good people in Westmoreland, the situation would have been worse. As at February 19, police crime statistics for Westmoreland show that 20 people have been murdered in the division, including three double homicides since the start of the year. That represents an increase of 12 murders of a 150% rise when compared with the corresponding period in 2021. Meanwhile, President of the Westmoreland Chamber of Commerce, Moses Shaibar, endorsed the need for business owners to open their doors and provide employment to people from these communities. He also supports the call to end discrimination and labeling communities as inner cities or squatter settlements. According to Chaibar, Southern Savannah Lamar, where a section has been declared a zone of special operations, is home to some of the finest people in the parish. They are persons with ambition who are hungry for opportunities, he said. Good and clean-minded people are living inside these communities, people who are just yearning for somebody to talk to them to let them know that we are all equal, Chaibar told the news in an interview. He acknowledged that while business owners are willing to provide employment, many of them are afraid largely because of the pictures that have been painted of persons who live in these communities. I know a lot of people from these communities. In my company, we hire them. They are hardworking individuals, Chaibar said. We have to start looking at how we can start to engage some of these people by providing employment. Water was a spark new Hanover protest. The National Water Commission has made another commitment to residents of Eastern Hanover that supply will be restored to their communities by March 10. This pledge comes on the heels of a second major demonstration in five days staged by angry residents over weeks of water shortages. Andrew Cannon, corporate communications manager at the NWC, told the news that crewmen are working to address the crisis. Cannon said that workmen encountered some unforeseen challenges, even though the dysfunctional pump has been repaired. Reinstallation has been delayed because of outstanding engineering work to secure the units. We understand the need to have the precious commodity because we know that persons really need water, but despite our best efforts, we were unable to have the resumption of water from the pumping station at the Shettlehood facility in Hanover, Cannon said. Water will continue to be trucked to the communities, the spokesman added. Monday's protest started as early as 6 a.m., with dozens of householders mounting roadblocks along the Chester Castle and the Shettlehood main roads that lead from Montego Bay in St. James through eastern Hanover to Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland. Hundreds of motorists, taxi operators, and commuters were left stranded. The security forces eventually cleared the roadway. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.